In this video, I'll break down some really cool music video effects in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, some of these effects are a little more complex, while some of these are a little more you know, simple, minimalistic, and clean. But these effects are just going to add to your music video and just make it look a little bit more interesting so your music video just doesn't look a little bit boring. Adding a couple little like simple visual effects can really just help add to your music video just so it's not as boring as it makes your video look a little more energetic and a little more um, fun. The first effect I want to go over is this really cool slow shutter drag effect. So this is what the clip looks like without any of the effects applied. Now this effect is comprised of three separate effects. So the first effect, if I head over to the effects panel, go to all, and I'm going to type in trails. The first effect you're going to use is the trail effect. Now I'm going to leave it just at the default setting. You can of course mess with the settings themselves. Another effect I'm going to add is visual echo. So I'm just going to apply the visual echo effect. So if I play the clip, this is what it looks like. It kind of has a really cool kind of like echo effect. Now one effect that you're also going to have to add to this if you want the stop motion effect is the strobe effect. Now the strobe effect does not come with Final Cut. You're going to have to download the plugin and it's on my digital store. So if I take this strobe effect and just apply it onto the clip, now you can adjust the strobe rate. So the lower the number is, the slower the shot is going to look. So let's take the strobe rate and let's change it to 4. Now this clip is going, now that effect is going to give it kind of that really cool kind of, as you can see, this really cool stop motion effect, this really cool kind of like shutter drop drag stop motion effect. Now a couple of things to keep in mind when you're using this effect is make sure there is a lot of camera movement, so a lot of like handheld camera movement. The, the scene is pretty dark and there are a lot of lights. So as you can see this clip there's a lot of camera movement, it's a dark scene and there are a lot and there are a lot of lights. So you can see this effect works perfectly with this clip. So that's the shutter drag effect. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool still frame effect. So you can see this is what the clip looks like, just the two clips together without any of the effects. So what you're going to do is you're going to import the photo. Now I've chopped the photo into two separate parts. So this one is 25 frames and this one is 20 frames. That is just what I did. It can be completely dependent on what you want to do. Now what you're going to do is you're going to chop the photo in half. So you have one half and then the second half is over here. In my case, I changed the X to negative 66. I changed the Y to negative 94 and then I change the scale to 132. So that's just what I did. It can be completely dependent on what you want to do. So if I play it, this is what it looks like. It just kind of zooms in. Now to add to the effect and make it, you know, a little more interesting rather than just having, you know, the photo pop up is add an adjustment. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to control D six frames. You can set this to however long you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the adjustment layer and now all I'm going to do is add a color board. So go to the color section and then go to color board, add a new color board. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to exposure, place a keyframe right here. You're going to go forward three frames. So one, two, three, go forward three frames. Take the global to 90 and the highlights to 100. And then what you're going to do is just place a marker, make sure it's in the middle and then go forward one, two, three frames, go to the end. Take the global to zero, take the highlights to zero, and then as you can see, if I play it, you just have this really cool flash effect. Now what you can do too is you can just copy the flash effect. So I'm just going to copy the flash effect, take the adjustment layer, and then just put it over both the photos. So it kind of adds a little bit to the actual effect. So if I play it, you have this really cool flash transition. Of course, you can use it, you know, however you want, but I just want to show you what I did, you know, the exact thing that I did. Now also you might want to do too is add some camera sound effects. So I added this kind of like camera beep sound effect, put it, line it up right there. And then I just took like a camera shutter sound effect. So you kind of like a camera beep sound effect and then a camera shutter. So it kind of sounds like that you're, you're holding like the, the button down the camera and then you're taking the photo. So I think it's a really cool effect. You know, you can use it however you want, change whatever you want, but I just want to show you how I did that effect with the stuff, the effects and the sound effects that I used to create that, you know, use, you know, kind of like, you know, do your own thing. You don't just, you know, copy exactly what I did, but hopefully that gave you some really cool ideas. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool outline effect. So you can see I had this clip of the Kid Leroy. All I'm going to do is before I do anything, I'm actually just going to add a strobe effect. Now again, you don't have to do this, but I think this makes it look a lot cooler. So I'm just going to add a strobe effect and then I'm going to change the amount to four. That way, as you can see, it creates this really cool kind of like stop motion effect. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clip, hold down option, and I'm just going to create a copy. So all you're gonna do is create a copy so you just have the two clips, these exact same clips. And what you wanna do is you wanna go frame by frame and make a cut every time the subject moves. So I'm gonna go frame by frame. I'm only, I'm only gonna do this a couple times. It's just gonna go frame by frame so the subject moves, create a cut, and then just kinda go frame by frame until the subject moves. So we're just gonna go frame by frame, and then as you can see, the subject moves. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to take the draw mask. Now I'm gonna do just a quick mask, because you know you definitely wanna put your time, take, take your time. Take the mask, and all you're gonna do is make sure you're on the copy layer, and you're just gonna create an outline. You can be as close to the subject as you want, or you can be as far away. So as you can see, I'm just cutting out Kid Leroy. Obviously, this, you know, I'm just doing it quick for the tutorial, but obviously, you know, it depends on how accurate you actually want it to be. So we're just gonna add the mask, and then there we go. So you know, it just depends on how you know exact and how specific you want it to be. So you'll take your time. You'll really take your time if you want to be more specific, or if you just want like a rough outline. I think this is a pretty cool effect. I don't think you would use this effect in every music video, but it's definitely just a cool video, uh, an effect to use. I saw it in like an Instagram video. I thought it was just a cool little effect, and I want to include it in this video. So as you can see, we just have the mask of Kid Leroy, and there we go. We just have Kid Leroy cut out. Now what you're going to do next is you're just going to add a stroke effect. Now this is also part of my digital store, so you can download uh, you can download this on my digital store. So I did the outer glow. You can also use um, the stroke should also be on there at some point. So I'm going to use outer glow, and as you can see, I'm just going to apply it onto the top clip, and there we go. You just have this really cool outline effect. So I think this is just a really cool effect to have so if I play it there we go you to this really cool outline effect the next effect I wanted to actually apply to this effect is this really cool comic effect so if I scroll down until I find comic so comic look and I just added this comic basic effect so I added the comic basic and then I just added the comic basic to this clip too it kind of creates this really cool comic book effect and of course we could do is you could go through and mess with the smoothness so you could turn up the smoothness the ink edges and just create this really cool kind of like stop motion outline comic book effect so as you can see if I play the clip this is what it looks like and then you just you know keep repeating those steps now another thing too that I did also include you don't have to do this is I added this really cool paper background so I just took this paper background and then applied it underneath the clip you obviously don't have to do that change the blending mode to screen this is just a couple of different ideas you don't have to do exactly what I do but I just want to show you a couple of different concepts and a couple of different ideas so as you can see there we go you know obviously don't you know, take your time I'm, I'm going a little quick for the tutorial for the tutorial sake and there we go and then you just you know keep repeating those steps until you get the look that you want the next effect I want to go over is this really cool freeze frame effect so what you want to do is you want to go to the beginning of the second clip hold down option F to create a freeze frame and we're gonna set the duration control D to like 15 frames this is just depends on how long you want the freeze frame to happen so we're gonna take the freeze frame and we're just going to replace it on top of the first clip so as you can see what's happening is it's just frozen and then it just goes into the second clip now what you want to do next is you want to go to the the effects panel and you want to scroll down until you find mask and all you're going to do is you're just going to apply a draw mask onto the clip and then you obviously you know take your time to really make sure you cut out the subject but i'm just going to do a pretty you know rough job just for the tutorial's sake because obviously this masking in general can take an estimate of like 10 to 15 minutes to get a really good mask but i'm just going to do a quick outline of course, you know, like I keep saying, take your time with this, really make sure it's specific, or maybe you, you like the idea of kind of the background showing, you know, so it's all up to you which one you do, you prefer. So I'm just going to do a very quick mask just for the tutorial's sake. So there we go. He's just going to kind of pop up on screen. So if I play it, he just pops up on screen, which that in and of itself is a pretty cool effect, a very simple effect, but we want to add to it and make it a little more interesting. So take the clip, create a copy, hold down option. I'm going to disable the top clip so you can see what's happening. Go to the bottom clip and then invert the mask you may also have to adjust the feather if you if, if something doesn't look right now all you're doing is you're just keyframing these individual um, cutouts so what you want to do is you want to go out to like 50 percent so we're gonna go up to 50% and we're just going to take, as you can enable this grid, we're gonna take the subject and we're gonna drag this subject all the way down. So have them off screen, so we're gonna have it start off screen. We're gonna take the background and we're also going to drag the background off the screen. So you wanna make sure the background and the subject are off the screen. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to place keyframes on the position of both of these clips. Now of course you're gonna offset the animations if that's what you want. All we're doing is just animating the position, go to the end of the clip, end of the freeze frame, and then change both of the positions to zero so we're just going to change both of the positions to zero and now if I play it it's going to slide up and then you have this really clean 
um, freeze frame transition. So if I play it, as you can see, you have this really, really cool freeze frame transition. So I use this really clean and nice um, freeze frame transition. Simple as that. It takes 15, 20 minutes, and there you go. You have a really cool uh, transition. Also, make sure anytime you're doing freeze frames to add some motion blur just to help make the animation look a lot smoother. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool camera shake effect. So what you want to do is you want to take both these clips and you want to increase the scale to 120%. So you can adjust it more or less. It depends on what you want to do, but you want to make sure you scale the actual frame up. Now what you want to do is you want to go back or oh, start at the, at the middle of the two clips, go back eight frames. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we just went back eight frames and then I just went forward eight frames and placed a marker. So this is where the animation starts and then this is where the animation ends. So it can be one frame, two frame, three frames. It just completely depends on what you want to do. So what you want to do is you want to start at the beginning and then you want to click on this icon, click on this transform icon and then place a keyframe. You're just going to press keyframe. Now what you want to do is you want to go for two frames. So one, two, go for two frames and now you're going to take the clip and you're just going to move the clip in one direction so we're just basically keyframing the position so and then you can what you're going to do is you click on the clip go forward one two frames you're going to drag the clip in the opposite direction so then you can kind of see what's going on it's kind of rocking back and forth now once that happens you're going to go one two frames forward and then you're going to drag it in the opposite direction it's just going like every two frames kind of dragging it in the opposite direction so if i go to the second clip we're going to start the second clip place a keyframe and now we're going to do the same thing we're going to go one two frames and we're just going to move the clip go like this of course you know take your time i'm just going quick for the sake of the tutorial now we're going to go one two frames we're going to move the clip in the opposite direction make sure that none of the background is showing i'll, I'll show you how to I'll look at that later go forward one two frames move the clip in the opposite direction so i think you pretty much understand what's going on so we're gonna go one two frames and then you know and then you just move it in the opposite direction so as you can see we'll make sure this works so we're just going to play it and then as you can see see it's moving all around now if i go out and minus out you have this really cool um, camera shake effect so as you can see you're just kind of animating it so it's kind of like rocking back and forth and now you have this really cool camera shake effect so there we go you can do it all digitally obviously put a little more time into it. I obviously kind of rushed it um, a little bit so you obviously you know put your time put, put the time into it now what you want to do too is you want to before you you know finish this effect go out to 50% and then press this icon and then what you want to do is you just want to go frame by frame and you just want to make sure none of the background is showing so click on this clip right here and then you just want to make sure that none of the background is showing so I'd probably want to fix it right there so just go through and make sure that none of the background is showing another really important step you want to do too is you want to add some motion blur so let's head over to motion blur and we're just going to add moderate motion blur and we're just going to trim the motion blur you want to add a little bit of motion blur so to add kind of that blurry effect so if I play the effect this is what it looks like now you have this really cool camera shake effect you know so obviously you know you can make it more intense less intense but there you go that's pretty much it you're just kind of going every frame by frame and you're moving the clip in a different direction so if, it's like if you move it right the next one move it left so it's like left right right left kind of kind of create that really or simulate that really cool camera shake effect the next effect I want to go over is this really cool reverse video effect so if I play it this is what the clip looks like so all you're gonna do is you're just going to copy the clip to Two times so we're gonna go one two you're just going to copy the clip uh, the clip twice go to the middle clip click on reverse clip so all you're doing is you're just reversing the clip and then I would obviously sometimes extend the length of the third clip so as you can see if I play it you just have this really cool kind of like reverse um, boomerang effect in Final Cut the next effect I want to go over is this really cool object wipe transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second video and I'm just going to place it underneath the first video. So if I play it, nothing really is going to happen. And there we go. You know, it's just you have a simple effect. So all you're going to do is just the first, well, I guess first step, take the first, take the second clip and place it underneath um, the second, the, the first clip. Now what you're going to do, you know, oh, just going to, as you can see right here. Now. This, what you want to do is you want to take the object and you want to place it on top of the two clips. Now you want to make sure that, as you can see, these all line up or else it's just not going to look that good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the object and we're going to zoom out to like 50% and we're going to take the money and we're just going to kind of rotate it a little bit and then kind of we just kind of scale it up a little bit so scale up to be like 300%. 
we're gonna be like maybe like 220 so as you can see we're just going to scale up the money so you're just gonna scale the object whatever it is so we'll kind of rotate it a little bit and then what you want to do is you kind of just want to test it so we have a final cut to render just make sure it actually wipes across the screen so if I so just kind of test it and make sure see if it goes in this direction it's gonna completely cover the screen so we're gonna start the money kind of like in this direction of course you can fix it later it all you know it's completely dependent on your object and what you're using you want to make sure at some point it's completely covering the screen so what you're going to do is you're just going to keyframe or animate the object itself so what you're going to do is we just place a keyframe on the object now you're going to go to the end or just you know one frame back so we're going to go to the end of the clip i would sometimes encourage you to go one frame back to actually to be able to see it now you're just going to drag the money so it kind of wipes across the screen now as you can see it, it kind of without any of the other stuff it looks really weird so if i play it this is what it looks like it looks really weird where like the money is just kind of sliding across the screen so that just looks really really weird but if you add a couple if you add a little bit of masking it can definitely make the effect look so much cooler so what i'm gonna do is head over to the bottom clip i'm just going to disable it and then where the object is you know where the object is i'm just going to make a cut to the first clip now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a draw mask so i'm going to go to masks and i'm just going to add Add a draw mask to the first clip now I'm gonna go forward a couple frames to kind of get an idea now what you're gonna do is, is you're just going to create kind of like a rough outline of the mask so as you can see this is what it looks like just kind of create a rough outline what you want to do is you want to invert the mask and then you want to take the mask and just kind of move it off the screen and make sure you're starting at the beginning of the clip so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the beginning of the clip make sure the mask is off the screen so what you're gonna do is you're going to go to transform place a keyframe on position and then place a keyframe on control points now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go every couple frames and make sure the money is the mask is covering the money so if I play it make sure the money so what we're gonna do is we're going to take the mask you want to make sure the mask is, is always on the money so if I play because you want to make sure you don't see any of the background so you see the the, the background is black so you don't want to you don't want to do anything there so you just constantly want to make sure the mask is completely over the money so that's just really really important if it's not your the background is going to be showing as can look really weird so simple as this as you can see we're going frame by frame and make sure the mask is always on top of the money or else the background is going to be black so as you can see that might have messed it up a little bit and we can adjust stuff later but it's a pretty easy effect again just make sure it's covering the money i think i may have saw somewhere it may have messed up and there we go and now we can just take the mask and now as you can see obviously you can go through and test it and make sure everything is okay but you just basically key from the mask so let's go frame by frame and make sure it work it might not be perfect but as you can see the mask kind of messed up a little bit there so the but the, the background is showing so I think somewhere right here so as you can see the mask is kind of messed up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the mask and we're just going to move the mask over and then we're just gonna make sure the mask so the mask is messed up a little right there we just want to make sure that none of the belt the black background is showing so now let's kind of play it and let's see how it looks and then there you go now it looks perfect so after it definitely takes a little bit of time so if i play it there we go that looks really nice now if we just we enable the bottom clip now you can see it just kind of wipes across also i would encourage you to add some motion blur so if i play the clip there you go and it just wipes across and reveals the second clip I think that's such a really cool effect. So if I play right here, it's probably gonna lag a little bit, but there you go. You have this really clean white transition. So just make sure, as you can see, I'll go back again just so you can see what's happening. You wanna make sure that the mask is always on that money just to make sure you don't see any of the background and that's what it looks like and there you go. Simple as that, you have a really clean object white transition in Final Cut. The next effect I wanna go over is this really cool blur transition. So I'm gonna take the adjustment layer, take an adjustment layer, the links will be down in the description below. I'm gonna set this to 10 frames. So I'm just gonna set this to 10 frames. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go forward uh, five frames. So one, two, three, four, five, place a marker, just so we know that's the middle of the adjustment layer. So now we just have an adjustment layer so it's going to place the adjustment layer and make sure it's in between the two clips. So what you're going to do is you're just going to add some directional blur. So go to blur. We're going to go to blur and we're going to add some directional blur. Apply the directional blur onto the clip. We're going to go to the beginning of the adjustment layer. Change it to zero. So make sure it's the, the amount is zero. Place a keyframe and then go to the middle of the adjustment layer. And then crank this up however you want. So let's say like 300. And then we're going to do is we're going to go forward one, two, three. 
three, four, five frames, go to the end, and then crank it down to zero. So if I play it kind of in slow motion, you can see it creates this really cool and nice blur transition. So if I play it, this is what the, the effect looks like. So you have this really clean um, blur transition. So you're just basically, as you can see, you're just key from the directional blur, and you have a really nice and really clean directional blur or just blur transition. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion 5 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to check out my Final Cut Pro 10 playlist where there's over 300 tutorials to learn from. Lastly, make sure to check out my website where I sell uh, Final Cut Pro 10 plugins. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.